I was watching a documentary by Alan de Botton. He's kind of like a popular philosopher, I guess. Um, popular as in the sense of popular culture philosopher. Um, and he writes books and makes documentaries that are basically accessible to the layman, which I pretty much am when it comes to philosophy. I'm interested, but I'm not. I'm not very well read. Um, and so this documentary I'm talking about is called Status Anxiety. It deals with the strange phenomenon that despite us being so material, materially well off, we seem to be struggling in a lot of ways. Society does and individuals do. Um, people seem to not really be getting happier to the extent that we would expect based on our material wealth and there are all these strange things of people being deeply unhappy despite actually having a certain amount of security and more material prosperity than probably um, the royalty would have had available to them a thousand years ago. Uh, and one of the, the parts of the, the, the doco that really stuck with me uh, was, um, he was he mentioned someone, <coughs> I think it was a sociologist, um, they basically developed this kind of formula for happiness and it goes happiness equals um, achievement divided by expectation so achievement um, you know if you have very high expectation let's say we have 10 expectation then you're gonna need a lot of ach achievement um, to become happy so if you have 10 expectation and you have 10 achievement you get one happiness Whereas if you can lower that expectation, so if you can lower that to 1, then the same 10 achievement will give you 10 happiness. And it's kind of ridiculous putting it in units, but you get the point. Um, so then, I mean, first of all, you, the first thing to realize is that uh, the only real way to kind of beat the system is to be able to raise your expectation to 0, because then you get infinite happiness. Whereas... Uh, if you try to uh, modify the numerator, then infinite happiness only comes with infinite achievement, which is unfortunately um, impossible. Um, and I think that's really a problem with the world at large. Because first of all, when you look at like neoclassical economics and classical economics, uh, well, I guess mainly neoclassical economics is where it came up, the kind of the ideas of utils and um, and uh, the concept of you know basically trying to calculate utility to people, which is really just trying to say, well, this is how much happiness they'll get from something, and marginal utility and so on and so forth, and so basically trying to allocate that marginal utility efficiently, and that will you know and then have efficient markets and so on and so forth, and that's all supposed to increase create maximum efficiency in creating happiness um, but the problem is that if we at the same time are actually for whatever reason affecting the expectations of people if we're increasing them and possibly increasing them beyond where they're reasonable beyond where most people or even the vast majority of people can actually um, go with their achievements then we'll be creating an unhappier society. They might have more. They might have more in the achievement, um, in the achievement numerator, but the expectation denominator has gotten so large that even that won't satisfy them anymore. How can this work in the actual world? Well, I've talked before about how I loathe advertising, and I'm very unhappy when I notice that various things are pulling on my kind of basic instincts and manipulating some kind of root basic desires in me uh, in general I'm not a fan of when people try to motivate me by making me feel bad for not having something or not achieving something yet this is how a l this is one area that a huge amount of effort goes into because if you want to sell something then that's basically the best trick you have available to you is making people desire it increasing their expectation for this good and that's what everyone's trying to do at the same time 
and these expectations get built up. At the same time, popular culture um, always gives you these kind of things that people want to see, which is people with very high achievement, because people want to see that, because if they had that high achievement, then they would have a lot of happiness. Um, the problem is that that high achievement, uh, that basically seeing that raises their expectations, and that high achievement is not available for everyone at the same time. It's impossible. It's just, it cannot be done. Not everyone can be that millionaire um, or, or even that, that very wealthy, very handsome, attractive person that everyone's interested in. It just doesn't work like that. And so we end up in this society where we, and I am definitely talking about myself, and I try to be aware of this. I mean, it's, I, I try to be kind of self aware when I can. Um, but I notice it in myself. I notice, I notice wanting things and having these kind of desires stroked in me. And I definitely notice that if I give in to them, it gets worse. Um, so we end up with a society that is far less happy than it should be, just because the expectation has been raised beyond all sanity. And then you see that in all of these kind of the, the American dream, the Australian dream, all of these dreams are dreams of that are basically in excess of what is really achievable for people. Um, in in well, they are because they're always kind of slightly ridiculous. They're never just well, you have a nice place to live and an okay job. They always go beyond that. You should have everything you desire. Your expectation should basically be uh, almost the highest amount of achievement you might possibly be able to attain. But you're unlikely to attain it because uh, you're probably not going to be that lucky or that talented and that energetic. Um, and to me, that's that's a huge flaw in the system, uh, be because basically it's these kind of it's this huge contradiction. Uh, the idea is that this market will, you know, we, we run everything very, very efficiently. This company will sell more and more goods and then it will run very efficiently and these goods will make people happy. But by doing all of this, through advertising, through these intrusions into popular culture, we are actually really... Uh, we're raising the expectation so much that that the economy can't keep up. But the economy <laughs> makes the most money if they actually raise those expectations, um, and and they they make money. So I mean, the economy's fine, um, you know, at least until we go bust because we can't meet all those expectations. And uh, but people aren't fine, and the economy eventually goes bust. Either goes bust because we can't meet these expectations. Or we have this massive problem where we just have people um, who suddenly can't reach even their base level expectation anymore to be just content enough. And then we get into social problems. And I think that's what's happening as well. And what people were doing in the meanwhile is borrowing a lot so they could at least try to keep up with their expectations, which were beyond their means. Um, and, you know, you could say, well, maybe they weren't that much beyond our means. If you look at the planet, if you look at the environmental situation and what will happen if every single person in the world is going to raise their expectations to Western, whether it be Australian or American or European levels, what's going to happen to the planet? It's going to be disastrous. We can't afford it. So if we can't afford making people happy that way, um, you know, obviously we need to f look for alternatives in terms of technologies to be able to provide more things that people want uh, with less environmental impact. But I think we really need to work on for the environment and for ourselves. Um, and because it's just, it is actually the most efficient way to be more happy is to actually start working on expectations, to work on, on our own expectations and to start thinking about where societally we should have that, we whether we should have that conversation about expectations, and not just this kind of BS conversation that 
people, you know, politicians bring up, oh, you know, no, a real one, an honest one, one that challenges the things that um, make us feel insufficient and inadequate, one that says maybe we should actually start viewing negatively anything that is trying to play on those expectations and maybe we should as a society try to put a stop to it and I'm talking advertising I'm talking um, unrealistic Hollywood por portrayals of, of, of people um, and I'm not talking about about you know I mean advertising I would ban a lot of it to be quite frank I would I would ban any advertising that is not to do with the product itself and its features when it comes to popular culture, I don't think it makes sense to ban a certain type of movie because it's not a realistic portrayal of, of people. But maybe when we have the conversation, people will start saying, no, we don't want to see that kind of movie. No, we don't want to get that kind of entertainment. What we want is something that's realistic, that's something that's grassroots, that's about us, that's about real people. Um, and you know maybe they won't and it'll be an ongoing and long-term process but I have hopes that we can work on lowering expectations and it's almost sacrilegious to even talk about lowering expectations what am I some kind of a red fanged communist who's gonna stuff you into potato sack and throw you into Siberia where you're gonna you know you're gonna spend your your 30 minutes a day of entertainment time like making mud pies no but there are actually simpler pleasures that I think are in many ways better pleasures. Um, and yes, considering that we don't really have a choice, I think I, th I think it just makes sense to just think about these things again. Anyways, I'll see you guys all later.